We're going to read God's Word together. Um, there's Bibles scattered around on chairs. If you've got one near you, then you can turn to that. It's on page uh, 1179. Page 1179 on the Bibles around the church. And we are looking at Philippians chapter 2 and the first eight verses of that. It is our passage for the week. If you've got Readers 1 leaflet, you will see that's this week's reading. Um, that one there. And uh, that goes right to the end of the year. So if you need a copy, if you lost a copy, I think there's one or two still left on the table, or I can print some more off if need be. So we say, uh, we declare what it is we're reading from before we read from it. So let's say these words together. I hold God's word in my hands. It encourages, it corrects, and it instructs me. Lord, speak to me now. So it's Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 1. <coughs> Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. We give thanks to God for that word. And over the last four weeks, up to today, we have been thinking about being a blessing to someone. Uh, as Ali said, for next week we're thinking about counting our blessings, but we have been looking at being a blessing to other people. We talked about um, acts of kindness, of showing acts of kindness to people uh, around us, to bless other people in some way. And uh, we said right near the beginning, kind of it's a just do it situation. Uh, just if you, if you think you can do it, then don't hesitate, just do it. Um, it doesn't take much. And some of us have been, I know, greatly challenged because you've told me. And we've realised that it's so simple to do that, to just do it, to just give some, something, let someone in front of you perhaps go in the queue, kind of go, you know, someone behind you rather than in front of you, someone behind you kind of go, you know, well, you go first. Uh, dropping a card or a message. Some of you took away last week um, those little fold-up cards that you could drop in someone's letterbox. Uh, giving an extra big tip to someone who's been waiting at your table or delivering something to you. And taking out some flowers to someone. Uh, giving a gift to a delivery girl. Uh, it's kind of simple but what we've been talking about over the last four weeks and, and yet we know that we still need the courage to just do it. And I hope all of us have started to have the courage to just do it. Certainly in the last week I've had a lot more courage. I've been thinking about it more and I told you that you know, up until then uh, there were times when I let things slip but uh, this past week I uh, did two or three things. Uh, simple things, but uh, I would hope that many are doing that now. Uh, it's coming into their minds to say, yeah, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do the lack of kindness. So it's Remembrance Sunday. And um, we're thinking about lives given, <coughs> sacrificially, lives given for other people. And in the two world wars, millions gave their lives 
literally gave their lives. They joined up or they were called up to fight in some of the battles, the horrid wars that have been in the past. And there are thousands of stories. Quite often at this time of year in particular, we hear some of those stories of people who stepped out and did, again, a kind of act of kindness to others in time of war. Some that, mean, some that meant that they actually lost their lives doing that to save somebody else's. Some saved one or two people, others saved hundreds of people, like Nicholas Winton. Some of you will know of Nicholas Winton. At the time, we know the, the Germans in the last war, the World War, uh, were wiping out Jews in every land that they were entering. And there were many Jewish children who had become orphans, refugees. Many disappeared over the coming months. But Nicholas Winton saved over, over 600 Jewish children from, well, we don't really want to think what he saved them from, but we can only guess. <clears throat> so I just want to put on a little video to think about these acts of kindness and so on, and the sacrifice of others, uh, to just pause for a moment and think about Nicholas Winston.
So in our reading for this week from Philippians, uh, Paul says in verse 5 there, In your relationships, have the mindset of Christ Jesus. In other words, do as he did. And do it for the same reason that he did. We can give of ourselves. We can give of ourselves. Now, I'm not suggesting we have to make some huge sacrifice. I'm not suggesting we have to take a year out of our life to do it. I'm not suggesting that we even have to endure great hardships. Do as he did. That's really what we've been thinking about over the last four weeks. You know, when Jesus walked this world, read through the Gospels and see what he did. He loved people. He loved people. He valued people. He served people. That was his way. And, and when some of Jesus' friends tried to stop him and tried to steer him away from doing those kind of things, Jesus got really indignant about it. He stopped and he fed hungry people when the disciples were happy to say, let them go and find their own food. He let little children come to him when his disciples wanted to push them away. He stopped in the middle of a huge crowd for one woman who came up behind him and he stopped and talked with her. I was asked on Wednesday at a school assembly uh, about being a Christian. And I said, you know, it's just following Jesus Christ. That's what a Christian is, a follower of Jesus Christ. Because he showed a better way to live. He showed us how to give of ourselves to others. Just giving a few minutes. Valuing one person that others might pass by. Giving out a flower to someone. Giving to someone in need. Or just blessing someone with some kind of kindness. It's actually very, very easy. And we can all, everyone here, we can all do it. We also know that as Jesus did that, he did it for a reason. Well, he did it for compassion. We know that Jesus was a very compassionate person, so definitely that. And we can be compassionate to others as well. We can show our concern, we can show our sympathy for those that we meet. Jesus also did it because he cared. It was his choice to care for people. But the greatest reason that Jesus did what he did, and it's the reason that we should do acts of kindness, and that is love. Loving people, a real look in the eyes love for those that we meet, knowing that God loves them and we should love them too. Because when, when Jesus walked the earth, he just kind of oozed God's love. It drove his entire ministry, really. It made him want to stop and help people. You know, we, we really can't have compassion if we don't have love for people. And we can't really have a love for people unless we really know God's love in our own lives. And that's it really. We need more of God's love that kind of then overflows out of our life into other people's. How do we find that love? Well, it's the same way that I say about so many things in our Christian lives. Wherever we pray, we get close to God. Whenever we listen and tune into God, and we have to learn how to tune into God's voice, when we listen to Him, we start to gain His love. When we hang around God's people, such as today, we start to develop and understand more of God's love. And then His love will start that ripple effect, if you like, from our life. There will be a, a bubbling up of God's love in us and that it will overflow into other people. And as I said over the last few weeks, 
One day when we have shown acts of kindness, when we have loved people around us, when we've done something helpful to others around us, one day, on a very special day, we will hear the words of the Lord say to us, well done, good, faithful servant, well done. You have given of yourself. You have followed me. So come on in to the banquet and we will enjoy peace and fellowship and joy forever and ever. Let's just bow in prayer for a moment. Our Father, to